RTTV is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Keep your financial data safe and secure. Save it from hackers. Visit expressvpn.com slash RTTV to learn all about it and keep yourself safe. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Receipt <gasps> Podcast. I'm Gus. Hi, Gus. <laughs> Hi, Gavin. <laughs> I had to... I didn't know you were going to go into a fucking ad read at the outset and I, I had a burp queued up and I'm and right I, and I don't want to I don't want to burp over did a you, sponsor you just stifle the burp? so I had to just eat a burp and oh, it no. hurt it hurt I'm starting off the podcast at a deficiency now because my did I not hurt. say we're gonna start the podcast I'm gonna do the read we're gonna go around the horn and then we'll go mm. I literally said that two minutes ago wasn't that listening. he was queuing up a burp you can't do two things at thank once. you yeah thank also you. this is since we normally do this from home I couldn't see the monitor so I didn't know when the lower third I didn't know when the camera came on to me. <laughs> I didn't know when the lower third came. I'm like looking out of the corner of my eye there's a camera right here or oh, yeah, I was monitor right here. yeah I was like okay I think that's that's me I can see the color of my shirt I can see the graphic you should just look at up. me I'll give you cues Gus I'll be like yeah, <laughs> I have no. I have to look over here. That I, now I can see it. It's over there. I can see me. That's a good looking. That's a good looking person. It's me. Um, man, I did something that annoyed me the other day. You annoyed yourself. I annoyed myself. I, uh, did you know going into it you were no, going to do something that annoyed you? No, I, I thought I had really done the homework. Me off. It's called, so you you so you were surprised. Were you surprised by your action or surprised that it annoyed you? I was surprised at the outcome. I I was driving around town the other day. And uh, I drove by a Ford dealership here in Austin. And I thought, oh, Ford has that new electric car, that Mach-E, right? Like, I wonder if they have one there on the lot. If they do, I'd, lo I'd love to see it. I'm not in the market for a car, but, yeah. you know, I, I own a Tesla. I'd like to see the electric vehicle that Ford's making. So I went home, and I looked on the Ford website, and I looked at all the dealerships in Austin. I was like, oh, the one that I drove by, it says here on the website, they have four in stock. I could drive down there right now and look at one. So I drove down there to look at one, and I'm, like, walking around the lot. And, of course, they're all coming out, like, can I help you? Can I help you? Fine, like, fine. Yeah, uh, I'm looking for uh, the, the mach -E. I want to I take a look at it. Like, oh, we don't have any of those. <laughs> I was like, but your website says you have four right now on the lot. Like, yeah, we've, had, we've maybe had five in the last six months, and we sell them as soon as we get them. I was like, what? And what? then the guy was like, well, we have one charging over there. I was like, oh, can I look at it? He goes, no, that, that belongs to someone. I was like, well, I mean, that doesn't <laughs> fucking help me, does it? Why would he tell you that? <laughs> What's the point? He's like, you can look at it from the outside if you want. He has the equivalent of saying, just walk around. You might see one driving. Or <laughs> go and look at one in public. What's was, the point? I was like, why did the website say that there is some... I, I intentionally went home to look at the website so that I wouldn't go and have to talk to someone, like, out, you know, unnecessarily. Now you're going to have to do that and then also call the place to double confirm from now on. Are they... Are those just going to add a stupid set. Yeah, no kidding. Are the stock numbers per location of stores, are they all bullshit across they, the entire industry? Because I feel like it's never true. They must be. Because according I mean, to the website... Every dealership in Austin had four or five in stock. And this guy's like, oh, no, we've only ever had five in the last Never. six months. Maybe, yeah. they just maybe to go. Ford is just full of shit. Because when I bought my car, I found it on the website first. And I went down in and I was like, can I drive the car on the website? And they're like, yeah, it's right over there. I know what the issue is. They had Ford in stock. I, oh. I, I was going to reach for my, my soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Thank you. I think it's the universe telling you to stay the fuck away from Ford. It, maybe it is. Yeah. I'm just curious. What's wrong like, with Ford? Uh, apparently, they don't want to sell to Gus. It's true. I mean, I'm a, also, I'm a Honda girl, so. Mm -hmm. I was I very fighting. excited about this new Bronco. You know, Bronco's my all-time favorite I saw vehicle. The Bronco, I saw that when I was there looking yeah. for the Maquis. And so I was really jazzed about it. I even priced a few out, thought about buying one maybe. And uh, they don't, they're not, they're cool in pictures. In purpose, they look kind of, or in person, in purpose. In person, they're kind of small and dinky. And I was like, I saw it in person, I went, oh. I walked by one. I thought it looked cool. It looks okay from one angle. Is, is, uh, <laughs> is it Bronco? Is, it is that the car that was your dream car the whole time? And then as soon as you could afford one, you went out to get one. You couldn't find one. You bought something else immediately. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a dream. It's just not a very strong dream. It's a dream. It just has to be available that day. Yeah. Available to it's drive off It's a dream of convenience. <laughs> oh. Is your dream car still the same? The Aston Martin? Yeah. Hasn't changed? No, well, I haven't ever driven a car. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so I've not yet found out if I like one or not. I, like, when do you... Is the time to get a new car when the one you have is just, like, unusable anymore? Or Well, I think you miss a window at some point. Because at some point, it becomes funny that you haven't changed car in so long. And I think you're way beyond <laughs> upgrading no. a car. You should now drive you, this until you, it conks out. You should absolutely drive a car into the fucking ground. 
I've had the same car for 10 years at this point, almost. And it's, I think it's impressive. It works great. Yeah. No reason to change it. Don't rock the boat. How long, how long would you say is the average amount? Maybe not the average amount of time. How long would you say your average for owning a car is? Uh, my average... You've had that know, Prius like, for a while. Probably like eight years or so. Yeah. How, and you've had 10 years for 10? Well, yeah, when I moved to Austin. So, yeah, in December, it'll be 10 years. I had the Audi for, I think, eight years. Seven and a half, eight years somewhere. Your car for yep. like seven Thank and a half, you. eight years. Yep. And I thought that was like, that was a pretty good, that's, a, that's like, I feel like I got my money's worth out yeah. of that car. When I bought my Prius back in 2010, I thought to myself, I, you know I me, mean, I did a spreadsheet. I was like, I'll break even on this car with fuel savings if I own this car. I forget what it was, like six and a half years. And I ended up having that car for eight years. So I felt like I did good with that car. That's real good. Yeah. 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 I ended up, tr well, mine always comes down to maintenance, right? Like the, the the Audi hit like a maintenance wall and then everything broke on it. And then I got into a fight with the dealership and they had the car for three months and it was a whole thing. And then so I basically picked it up from them and then drove it to another dealership. I get mad and I get like, I, I, I make final fuck you decisions. Your car ownerships always end in a fight. You never Why? have, like, a car that just kind of, like, peacefully goes away. Your car's always, like, you have, like, a defi very definitive fucked up, and that's the end of that car story. Can the BMW gracefully transition away from you? Uh, I wrecked the... <laughs> I stopped liking the BMW, the, 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 the old one, uh, because I couldn't, I couldn't stop running it into shit. <laughs> like, I kept having, like, I kept hitting, not nothing bad, I just... I don't know what it was about that car. It was something about me and that car. We never liked each other very much. It never felt super comfortable. I never felt comfortable in it. I got the impression the car wasn't that fond of me. And then, like, we just, I just kept hitting, like, light poles. And, like, <laughs> not fast, like, five miles an hour in a parking lot. You, like, bump in, it's like, oh, there's no Going dent in. in the fucking, in the BMW. The thing that sucked about the BMW is that I got it. See if you remember this story. I fucking I remember. got it. I had it for two months. Nicest car I ever owned. Uh, I shopped really well. Uh, shopped around for it. I got a really good deal, and it wasn't super expensive. It was like four years old, but it was like I felt like I had like a fancy car for the first time. It was I'm a like, nice car, a real nice car. It really was a nice car. Uh, and uh, I let Bernie borrow it to take somebody oh, to the airport. No. And I had had it for like I don't know a month or two, maybe max. And he called me to tell me he had gotten into an accident to freak me out. This is a very Bernie thing to do, <laughs> as all of you know. You've all gone through this with he, Bernie. He had borrowed the car because he was taking. Someone a contact to the of ours, yes. who we work with at a at a big company that rhymes with VIP. That you would you would maybe think macro hard, maybe <laughs> N <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> oh, anyway, oh, I was like I macro hard. hard. <laughs> he wanted to take your, uh, that person in a nice <laughs> car. A second. Uh, anyway, oh. so he took that person, and on the way to the airport, he called me to. He had this prank worked out where he had wrecked it, and he was really sorry, and that he would get it fixed and stuff. And while he's relaying this wreck no. he rear ends or he got no. rear by somebody yeah <laughs> like while he was on the phone pretending to have been in that in an accident and apologizing he got hit <laughs> that you can write like, oh and then he just started describing the the accident. and that net that that hit that was the first hit of that car it never got fixed not saying Bernie didn't fix my car, but for some reason it never got fixed. I, uh, I'm sitting here trying to remember why it never got fixed. And so that set the precedent of people of just like that car hitting shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then forever you're cursed forever. Cursed forever. He 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 read out the curse while he was in it, and then yeah. the magnetism of there is crashing happened. It's, and Gavin, you'll maybe learn this if you ever learn to drive. But I feel like there's nothing more embarrassing than if you're in a parking lot or like a busy section of road. And you're doing something, whether it's like backing into a spot or parking, whatever, and you do the thing where you like bounce onto the curb or you like turn too sharp where you hit something and people see you and your car does that little thing. I, I, I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. And everyone's watching you. I rode, I drove over a median two days after I bought my new car in it. Yeah. Just was not like took a left too, too tight and like went -dum, -dum. with your front and back tire. Yeah. And and I was like, oh, I fucked up this brand new car. I had to get out and look, and make and no, nothing was wrecked. But I was for like thirty five seconds. I thought like I had just drove a car off the lot and ruined it, essentially. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah if was... cars ever have cloaking, I feel like I would only ever use it for that. Yeah, just if I bump the curb and people could see me like bouncing around inside, <laughs> just like and people like, how was 
Huh? Man, the, Nothing, o- I guess. the other day, I left my house like almost at the exact same moment one of my neighbors left their houses. And we did that awkward thing where we like both backed out of our driveways and then like turned in the same direction. So like we're both going down the street and I'm behind them and my neighbor's driving. And it's like the first time I've ever seen my neighbor drive. I've never been in a car with my neighbor. Like, I don't, I've never been in a car with them. I've never seen them drive. And I'm watching them drive and I'm like, my neighbor's a bad driver. It's like I'm watching them like make lane changes. Like they didn't need to make that lane change. They're changing back now. Um, what are they doing? Have you ever honked at someone that you knew accidentally? No. I did that. I did that this weekend. <gasps> what happened? I was very hesitant to tell the story, but I was meeting up with my friend Erin at a park, mm-hmm. and we were both meeting there. She was driving separately to me because you know we live in different places, whatever. And I was driving down this road, and there's a section of cars that are waiting to turn left and another like lane of traffic coming the opposite way Mm -hmm. where she was doing a u-turn but i guess couldn't see the cars very well so she just went quickly and like i almost slammed into her and so i like honked and then like she drove off fast and i was like that was Aaron. <laughs> Shit, that was Aaron. Because like, Did I she could... know it was you. No, but and you I can didn't play tell it. You can play that off. Now? I didn't tell her. This she... is how she's gonna find out. It was like it was not like a giant honk, like "fuck you" kind of honk. It was just like, "oh my god, I almost hit you" kind of honk. Yeah. You like, can just play it off. And be like, I'm just saying hi. I recognize. You. Well, Jeff, what I didn't mention too oh, is no. after I honked and I saw it was Aaron and she was driving off, I went, I went like this just in case. And she she didn't, looked yeah. back and saw it was me, so I'd be like, I just saw it was you, and I was yeah. honking to get your attention. Uh, but yeah. That's definitely. smart, though. You need to cover your tracks. I was trying to explain this oh. to Gavin the other day in our... Do, do you want to say the beep? Or if I say the F word, will you yeah. make a mouth beep? Yeah. On our podcast, <laughs> Fuckface. Thank oh, you. Oh, sorry. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Count me in. Can't even do it. Brilliant. I don't even remember what I was talking about. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Whatever. Three, two, one. Uh, I literally Beep. don't. <laughs> it's going off on her. She's trying to help you. She's honking at you. Beep. Fuck face. Thank there you. you. There you I mean, you probably shouldn't say the word if you want the bleep to be effective because it's not muting your mic. Yeah, but it's the spirit of it. Okay, sure. Classic. Yeah, that works. Anyway, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> on your podcast. Oh God. Where Yay! the fuck did that Look, come it's from? Confade. You see that? We're celebrating. What are we <laughs> celebrating? We're celebrating being in the studio. That what? must have been over a <laughs> year old confetti. How old? What is that from? <laughs> that was the weirdest thing ever. Oh, a recent photo oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, recent okay. photo just shoot. Just not like a year old. I thought it was <laughs> this piece of red confetti just fell from the ceiling very gently as uh, we were all. You should keep that. Here. That's worth something now. I guarantee you, I will lose. You this. could actually <laughs> uh, auction that off at Extra Life for a charity. So on your on your hit runaway hit podcast bleep face something <laughs> happened. I don't know. I don't remember what we were talking oh, about. Oh well, that's great. I, when I said I forgot about it, I, I like that. honking at friends, no. bike ride, being terrible to friends, mm. waving it. Got to cover your tracks. Oh, I was trying to explain this go. to Got Gavin it. and the other dickhead on our podcast, Raymond. and uh, Raymond. Yeah, and uh, that it's always good when you when you have a scenario to try to cover your tracks, and they were arguing with me about it. Mm. Would you be? I agree with you. More or less annoyed if I crashed into you? Would you be more annoyed because it's me, or would you be like, "Ah, oh, I, I know who it is." It's less annoying. The that second one. one. The second one. Oh. Were you good to know? I would, in all honesty, if you crash, like if you hit my car with your car, yeah, I'd probably laugh. <laughs> as long as nobody got hurt, I'd probably laugh. Yeah. What did you do when I smashed your phone? I laughed. Yeah. Why'd you but smash his phone? To, uh, to you be have a dick. to laugh. I guess you have to, yeah. What what else are you gonna do? <laughs> it went like fifteen feet in the air. Just like, <laughs> we, were then, at, we were at Yellow like, Jacket <sighs> with another contact from a big company, and we were taking them out <laughs> for drinks. And I just Gavin and I used to have a thing where I was like, if I if you leave your phone alone, I'm gonna break it. If you leave your phone right and get it, it I'm wasn't a break guaranteed it. break. It was usually a guaranteed throw. I'm gonna throw or it. I'm gonna throw it. If I see it, I'm gonna throw it. I remember this time and period. Yeah, actually, it was. Yeah. It was like it was just. It was a thing. It was what we did. This is right? years. It was right? years. Yeah. It lasted for a while. And so one of those times, he had it out, and I just fucking took it, and I went. Phew. But I threw it a little too high, <laughs> too far, and on con- too much concrete, and it's like fucking shit. It was too much concrete. Yeah. Was it one Not of those, enough grass? One of those falls where it falls on its face, and then you pick it up and you turn it yeah, over. Yeah, it's completely shattered. Yeah. Yeah. But it was. I don't think it was shattered enough to stop me from using it. Yeah. And I've actually said before, I pref- I don't like having a brand new nice phone. It's like very you got to really keep you got to keep slick. it nice and you're very careful with it. 
because you don't want to break it. It's ex- it costs like a thousand dollars probably. Yeah, yeah. So when I do drop it and I just dink the side or I get a little crack, there's a sense of relief there. Yeah. It's like, well, now it's ruined <laughs> and I can still use it. So it's right. like, I'm not going to be overly careful, but it's still fine. Should, it's the best scenario for me. You should offer a concierge service for people who get new phones, <laughs> or you'll just break their phone a little Ding bit. It. That you way they don't have to, to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> just get like a really small, like a little rock hammer, like in Shawshank, and just like, <laughs> yeah. and just like fucking hit it in the corner of the screen. Yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense even to myself, but you... once I've wrecked a phone a little bit, I'm much more comfortable. No, I get that. I get, it's a... not pristine anymore. You yeah. guys don't have cases on your phones, no. right? I do, not... I do because now I, because my phone is spider vein in the back so i have to have a case oh, on it oh so it's, yeah. it's broken yeah and it's broken on the front but not enough to bother thing. me yeah, i used to i, I used to like one. if i if i chipped my phone i'd have to get a new one and now i don't <laughs> give a fuck because i also didn't chip them very often do you remember that game that used to be on the app store uh called send me to heaven like years uh. ago when the app store first came out apple re- ended up removing the game from the store from the app store because it was a game where you would turn the game on, then the accelerometer would measure how high you could throw it and <gasps> catch it. No. And it's like you would get a high score by throwing it as high as you could. Like the higher you could throw it, your, your phone, the higher a score you would have. Yeah. But Dude. at some point, doesn't the accelerometer just register nothing? Like zero G? Like how, how does it actually... Can it really tell altitude? Or is it just timing? I think it can tell the altitude. I can, I can tell when like it goes from going up to going down. So it should be able to measure it that way. Hmm. Mm. Fair play. Have you ever used the level app yes. on the phone? I use that all the time. That was one of the first yeah. apps I ever I downloaded. I'm still. I never used it, it, but I, I, I never it. trusted it at first. I feel like it's gotten better. Yeah. Are the, you gonna the, wreck my car? Are you gonna crash into my car? Well, I'm just trying to add up. Like, so you you've kicked a TV, kicked a TV over, a couple of phones. <laughs> it doesn't really add up anywhere near this price of a car. Oh, you wrecked my car. Um, eventually. <laughs> Tiny little your car. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe one day. Okay. Well, just so you know. I know where it is right now. <laughs> I, the, the thing, you know, for the last 18 months or so, I've been doing a lot of work yeah. to get myself to a better place. <laughs> and that just so you know, in all honesty, the way I would look at it is I have, will, I have had and will have a lot of cars in my lifetime. But I will, there will only be one Gavin Free in my life. And so, to me, you are far more important than a dumb car. So it's time to wreck Gavin. Right, yeah, so, so I would break be his leg. What's going on crack here? Crack him open. No, I'm saying if you wreck my car, I would just be like, whatever. Oh, cars are replaceable. Oh. You're not. Me being shitty and trying to wreck your car has turned into a nice moment. Do you want me? Do you want to switch spots real fast? No, I feel the same way about you. Really? Yeah. No, you'd be a little it's mad nice if I wrecked your car. I think. I'm, I, I no. I mean, I, uh, if if you did it for the lols, Listen, I might. But I want to go on the record. I'll be mad if any of you fuckers break my car. Okay. Well, like, I, 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 vice versa. You mad? noticed that I yeah, said yeah, yeah. these two. You no, were no, no. excluded yeah, from yeah, that. Yeah. If well, you mad, I wreck too long. my car More so I can get a new one, that would be great. But you know <laughs> that insurance claim. Yeah. <laughs> but you know that you, you can get hold of me a lot easier than any stranger who wrecks your car. I he, feel like you'd be more covered if I wrecked your car. No, it doesn't work that way. No, like I'm trying to, I'm trying, like. Is it because I, you'd have to look you're, at this? You're right. You're right. I can't even look at you when I'm thinking about this. I have to look up there. Like if I look at him, I'm gonna get mad <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. But no, I agree. Yeah, it's just stuff, right? People, <laughs> yeah. people matter. Stuff doesn't. If yeah, the last matter. year has taught us anything, it's that people matter way more than stuff, mm-hmm. right? I don't and know. Some other shit. It's probably taught us too. I just, but. I just, I, I, I was like the dragon in the Hobbit. I just got all the stuff in my home <laughs> over the last smog? year, and I, I sleep all in it and on it. Is that his name, Smog? Yeah. Okay. This episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by Brooklinen. After the year we've had, don't you just want to get all swaddled up in your bed with some new sheets and pajamas? Well, then you got to check out Brooklinen. Brooklinen was founded to create beautiful, luxurious home essentials at prices that don't leave your wallet empty. They work directly with manufacturers to ensure premium, high quality, and absurdly soft bedding towels, and loungewear at a fraction of the retail price. Brooklyn is so confident you'll love everything. They even offer a 365-day warranty. That's a year. I did the math. I double-checked it. Uh, Plus, they've got 75,000 five-star reviews and counting. It's hard to argue with that. I actually got a set of sheets from Brooklyn. It's so awesome, so comfortable. They feel great. Um, I'm in I'm even more relaxed in bed if that's even possible. Uh, get everything you need for spring refresh during Brooklyn. It's biggest sale of the year. Shop the Brooklyn and birthday sale going on right now. And if you're listening to this podcast after the sale ends, don't worry. You can still go to brooklinen.com and use promo code ROOSTER to get $20 off any purchase of $100 or more. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Enter promo code ROOSTER to get $20 off any purchase of $100 or more. Brooklinen, everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Smog. Uh, man. Speaking of my stuff, Smog. my fucking TV broke yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday. No. So fucking mad. Like, I, that TV's only 
Do you Three think, years old? Do you think Ford has any in stock that you can go look at? <laughs> Motherfucker. If Ford made a TV, good God. <laughs> Three years is annoying because it's definitely going to be after warranty. Yeah, it's but definitely out of warranty. Technology oh, hasn't but... advanced enough <laughs> but... to, be, to be like, sweet, new TV. Yeah. You're just going to be wasting money on it's the still, same thing. In my mind, it's still new. That is new. Does, it, still ha does it have all the features you, that like smart TV? Does yes. it have like all the sm it's smart It's got everything TV I shit? need. It's not like Jerry Seinfeld over here. Um, no, it was fine. It was What's a, the deal yeah. with my TV? <laughs> it great TV. It, the, the sound works great. Just like the fucking, the backlight burned out or something. So it's like the, the screen doesn't come on. Oh, Why don't fuck. you just make your own backlight? Oh, that's a good idea, actually. You just rip the back off. You're smart. Point. I wonder, you could probably, I could probably just buy like, hmm. What it's is it? It's probably like, I'll have to take it apart. I'm going to take it apart. You convinced me, Gavin. Do it. I bet it's like a daughter board on there that regular. I or it could just be like a wire melted or something. Right, yeah. I bet I could figure this out. Daughter and if you can't, my, I was trying to tell you this earlier. Separate to the motherboard. Ceiling TV. Oh yeah. I bought this. I bought this little, and this goes for you two too. I bought this little. It looks like a portable Bluetooth speaker, uh, but it's a, uh, it's uh, and it is, but it's also a uh, HD 4K projector. projector? Yeah. yeah, it's like 500 bucks. Did you or did you not see this on TikTok? No, I <laughs> I saw, so what the way the the way it worked That's is I went to. Uh, Marfa for a couple days as like a getaway and we stayed in a house that had one mm. and so I just used theirs and I loved it So I went home and bought one and stuck it on a tripod and then I just put it up I just as a joke I faced the ceiling in my bedroom and now I lay in bed and I just watch TV on the ceiling Dude. every night I thought I fall asleep every I night of my life I, and it's huge That's amazing and it's awesome I don't even have a TV in my bedroom. I hate the I, idea of same. having a TV in my Why? bedroom. Same. I, the bedroom's for sleeping and for other stuff. Dude, I totally it's agree. Down. Nice. I, I totally agree. What with other you. stuff, Gus? Let's get into it. <laughs> but this changed everything. I like. I don't want the bulk of a TV in my bedroom because I think, from a design standpoint, it makes it hard to design a bedroom properly if you've got to throw a TV and technology oh. in it. But this this is out of the way, and so I'm and it's just on the ceiling, and I'm already laying down. So I was telling like Wait, Gavin, it's I, like Queen's Gambit kind of. You're watching TV, yeah. and uh. And it's fucking awesome, and That's I love genius. it. Genius. Yeah, I, I go to bed at like eight o'clock sometimes now, just so I can watch TV in bed as opposed to in the living room. And then it's fall a great asleep. space saver. So what's your bed pointed at? Nothing. Huh. My, I, the door to my bedroom. Do you have a headboard? Yes. Why? Because it's so you can lean up and look at nothing. Wall? If you want, I guess. Like... Yeah. What is the point of a headboard? You're right. I'm taking it. I'm going home. I'm taking <laughs> apart my TV and I'm taking the headboard off my bed. You're a minimalist after this. Yeah, <laughs> fuck this. I like having the TV in the bedroom because it's like you wake up on a Saturday. You want to still like relax in bed and maybe watch like a movie or a mm. show. And you're just like still chilling. Have some coffee. Chilling in bed. It's nice. I, I guess I can't like when I get up, I have to take the dogs out. Oh, it's like. You like, have a responsibility. Right, it's right, like, right. oh, I'm up. Oh, fuck. All right, gotta let them, gotta let them out. So they yeah. don't we have no pets, no children. Yeah. And so we're just like, what do you want to do? Sleep? Here, I sent <laughs> you a picture to give you an idea of what the, what my setup is, Gus, so you can just kind of see what I'm talking but about. But I would love to be able to watch TV lying down because that's the one problem I have with the TV in the bed is like, you need more pillows <clears throat> to prop yourself up so you can still lie down and watch straight. But if you're just lying down, well, you've it's also, perfect. You've also got like, an, it looks like you have an angle in your ceiling here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, this, this is I like... Did, part of my ceiling is cantered, so it's like... Oh, that's the perfect oh, ceiling. Yeah, yeah so oh. it's kind of like the perfect ceiling for it. But oh. I assume it would work just as well. Um, but yeah, here, I'll show you, Barb. See, like, so this is my bedroom, like, me on my bed, so you can see, like, my ceiling is, like, it comes down. Oh, yeah, yeah. How can I see your slope. dick in this picture? <laughs> uh, that's, that's a bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> that's Henry, <laughs> upside down. That's his rib you're looking at. <laughs> Very loud. Sure, sure it is. Yeah. I love being able to hear Henry every time you record something. Jesus, dude. Yeah. Squeaking he's on like something. The, he's like the fourth cast member of Fuckface. Yeah, he loves Bleepface. Bleepface. Thanks. <laughs> Beep. Can we get buttons? Like, how much? If we get a We're making them for the store. in there. Yeah, but it's, it's got to mute me. Or it doesn't mm. count. Yeah. You got you to ask Mike. Route uh, this microphone into it, and then route that into whatever it's routed into. I don't know if that's possible. I don't know the way technology works. I, I want to ask you two a question based on something you said earlier before the podcast started. Are you looking at me? I'm or? looking at you, Barb. That's based off something that we talked about on Bleepface recently that had an episode that hasn't come out yet. But you mentioned being nervous before starting the podcast. Yeah. Kind of joking around. And, and Gus said something about being nervous before podcasts. And then I, I want to ask you guys get – you mentioned something about being nervous. I think you were joking around. But it's do you not... guys ever get nervous before RT Productions? It's not so nervous. Probably isn't the right word. It's more of like performance anxiety, hmm. where it's just I'm very hyper aware of the fact that people are watching me right now and that there's cameras on me and that 
like it's not just like having a normal conversation because you are presenting yourself to people while speaking. I see. And so I think it's just like being way too aware of myself and this like situation I'm in that happens before productions. But I'm not nervous about it. Yeah. I'm doing this 10 years at this point. So but it's like it's it's just you've had your 10,000 hours. You just like, yeah. How about you? Yeah. Same thing. No, no, yeah, I don't, I don't think I ever get nervous. I feel like I got nervous about something recently, but I can't remember what it was. I get nervous about hosting things. Like, I would get nervous before every episode of Always Open because, and you guys probably experience this to a degree, when you're hosting something, you have to be paying attention to the ad reads, paying attention to the time, if you have, like, segments or topics that you have to, like, jump to. So, make, like, specifically live stuff? Yeah, live stuff is especially. But even, like, you know, we're doing this uh, podcast for the Nevers, the Touch Base, and Jessica and I are co-hosting it and even like making sure we get through like all the the topics we want to talk about, all the points that HBO helps us put together, um, transitioning to the next segment and everything like that. So you're trying to have a conversation while also in the back of your mind being like, OK, how am I going to seamlessly transition into this next part? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot for the brain to handle. I think I, I t totally agree with you, by the way. I think Achievement Hunter helped prepare me for that part of it because that's what that's kind of the same. I don't know if it's the same for you, but like when you're doing a let's play, and especially if it's one that you like you created, like a Minecraft let's play, you're kind of going through all those while you're doing the let's play and trying to kind of steer it and make sure you get a beginning, yep. a middle, and an end, and yep. you're covering all, And so you're you're kind of having two you're, like you're of two minds in your head at the same time, like you're performing and going through it and being immersed but you're also like part of you is have has is like watching and overseeing the whole thing and managing and producing it it's, it's not as laid being laid back when you're part of something so if it's like hey we want you to be in this video or in this podcast as a guest where you just like yeah you're just here to hang out and talk like i know gus is hosting this podcast and he'll transition to the next topic whenever there's a lull in conversation mm -hmm. i don't have to think about it mm -hmm. but, but not when there's a lull in conversation hey there's a lull that's a different story it, it is great not to have to be the the, the person, yeah. yeah. And in our group, in uh, when when we make videos, we call it the daddy. The daddy, yeah. So who's the daddy of this episode? It's essentially whoever like came up with the concept for the video and is mm -hmm. like guiding everyone through it. Because you have to have a host to some capacity for videos. You can't just start. I guess you can't just start. It's probably what you guys do. I have to <laughs> discover more from being recorded that. I don't realize it in normal conversation, but there's very small periods where I'm not listening when I think of something to say, mm -hmm. yeah. and then I'll start listening again, or I'm thinking of something to say right before someone, and I'll miss sometimes just tiny snippets of the conversation that I don't hear until I listen to it back. So, so it's like I'm unaware of doing that when it's not recorded, yeah. but it's clearly happening all the time. But yeah. it makes me, like when you see comments on videos where it's like, oh, how did you not see this written on your screen at this point? It's like I am so far from being able to see everything on my screen at the same time. I can barely listen to what is being said and think of the next thing to say. Forget about oh, like what dude. happened in the top right corner of yeah. the screen for four seconds. God like, help you if it's a let's play and there's three different conversations <laughs> happening at the same yeah. time. Well, especially that you're with you guys where you have like 10 people in, in one video. It, yeah. it, the thing is it doesn't seem difficult. And when you watch people do it, it seems like a piece of piss. And it is easy when you're in the moment you just don't realize the stuff you're not looking at yeah. and you just don't realize the stuff you're not hearing yeah, yeah. until it's recorded and I, i've watched videos back where i'm in and i'm like wow it said it right in front of my eyes and i can see my eyes looking at the screen yeah. didn't see it because it's you had crazy. 80 other things going yeah. on in your head at the moment i'd say it's it, it's it's funny because i uh i i am the i guess the opposite of getting nervous ahead of time mm -hmm. Like, you mentioned that there's people watching us right now. I had completely and totally forgotten <laughs> until you mentioned it. Like, you. blissfully unaware. Yeah. I am literally just having a conversation with you four. I just have to remember in the back of my head, don't do anything to lose your career, right? <laughs> like, don't say anything to end your career. That's the only note I have for myself, right? Mm -hmm. But after a podcast, I fall apart. Really? Like it was kind of a conversation we had. Like, Gavin gets nervous going into Fuckface I, or, or, like, something like this where I am the opposite. I'm t totally comfortable. I'm and mostly then the night before. As actually. soon as it's over, it just it goes down to the point where probably within, like, three or four episodes of every – or three or four hours of every Fuckface we record, I have to call Gavin for a pep talk. Really? Yeah, yeah. I spiral bad. And <laughs> yeah. then I'm like, it was, was it the worst episode? And he has to, like, dig me out, you know, with his, like, a steam shovel. Yeah. Because it's always fine. But what – I try and steer Jeff away from doing is doing it while we're in the middle of the record. Oh, <laughs> I do that. Yeah. Is this okay? That. Is that okay? Because <laughs> we'll be in the middle of a story and be like, eh, bah, bah, forget it. 
I'm sick of listening to myself. It's like, no, no, keep going. It's good. I want to oh hear what God. happens next. No, I'm the complete opposite of that. Where beforehand and during, I'll be like in my own head about it. Mm. And then when a podcast or show is done, it, it's like it has wiped from my memory entirely. Yeah. Because like oftentimes, especially doing Always Open, afterwards we were done the show, producer would come up to me like, all right, what do you think for titles of that episode? I'm like, what do we talk about? I don't remember <laughs> I anything. Think- I think that is the far healthier way to go about it. <laughs> yeah. See, if you can, like, if you can, you just like, you can, because you can be nervous in the anticipation of something, but then if you have that moment and then it's wiped and you're good, that's when I feel better. On. That's when I feel best. I'm still upset about, I'm still upset about a story I fucking told <laughs> on the podcast a week or two ago that I didn't think I told well enough. Don't spoil the next and sleep face. I'm not gonna, but I'm still <laughs> mad about it, you know? And, uh, yeah, I, I, I carry that stuff way too long. I just have it all before what? and it, and to the point where it's like, for example, I did that video with Will Smith where I am I arrived like three hours early to set up, make sure everything was Whoa. there. What? You must have really thought it was important. Well, well, I had to fly in and I wasn't going to move to sit in the hotel. No, I was, get, I was, I was making sure we got everything. <laughs> wasn't going to reference Gavin showing up when we were counting down the podcast. <laughs> I was here. I couldn't get in because of the damn floor. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I've been, you know, brain swabbed already. Anyway, are you gonna think about this safe. later? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my call time was four o'clock, and I asked Eric. I was like, "When do we record at five, right?" And he was like, "Yeah, five. And I was like, "So I get there at four, and Gavin gets there at five oh one." Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Well, you got to you got to distract me while I was doing the ad reads. That's yeah, true. There you go, dude. I fucked with Gus in the ad reads this morning. It was great. It this was morning. really great. This yeah. morning, before this, an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I was I was there early at the YouTube space, just freaking out, just like trying to set up cameras. And I'd be like. And I would just like over, I would, I would like plug everything in and be like, all right, now I've got to move it out of that there. And then, I, and then it got to the point where I had nothing left to do. Everything was set and I had like 90 minutes. Yeah. And I was just sat there, just like, I wish my heart would stop beating so fast. I, I'm, I'm freaking out right now. I just want time to pass. I just need to get to the point. And it got to the point where like, he's walking up to me and I'm, I've just been freaking out for like almost two hours straight. And we pressed record and I was just like... And then I was like serenely calm, like all through making the really? video. It was just, he made me feel very comfortable. Like he was really good at doing that. Like making me feel like on an even playing field with Will Smith, yeah. which isn't the case at all. <laughs> He'll get there someday. <laughs> yeah. But he's a talented he, dude. But then talented we just like life. made the video. It's like boop, 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 make, you know, making each other laugh. It was funny. And we cut and I was just like, <sighs> and I was just like, I crashed. I was just exhausted just from all of the freaking out that I did your, before. Your, your heart had probably done all the beating it needed for the day. It was done. <laughs> I'd done a day's worth of beating. But I wish nice. I could somehow, because I know it will be fine. Like, how bad could it have gone? Not that bad, right? I, you know, it could have gone bad. Who it could have been terrible. <laughs> yeah, well, guess. Well, that's, I'm not What's gonna... the worst that could happen? You get like uh, blacklisted from uh, ever working with Will Smith or anyone in Hollywood ever again? Yeah, yeah. Or I like hit, hit a car window and it hits my jugular. But yeah, I was. Uh, that was a great video, though. Just such relief. Yeah. Just think of any episode of Extras or Hello Ladies, <laughs> and just that's how it could have gone wrong. <laughs> could have had a tray of shots, just spilled them all over everyone there. No, I I am not quite like that. Like, I would have been nervous throughout the entire thing until it was all done. Everyone went home. I was in my hotel room after. And it's like, okay, (laughs) now it's done. And I'm not going to think about anything that happened. It's done. It's over with. That's it. It it just makes me, in a way, not want to do stuff. Because yeah, because I I know I'm capable of doing it. I've done it a bunch. See, imagine going into that. But every time I successfully do something and I got away with it, I'm just like, I should just stop doing stuff now. Yeah. Why would <laughs> I do yeah, that yeah, again? Why would I put myself through that again? Yeah. It's a... It's we kind of touched on that in a bleep face. This episode of the Receipt Podcast brought to you by our show sponsor, BetterHelp Online Therapy. There's a huge misconception that therapy is just sitting around talking about your feelings. It's not just complaining while your therapist nods, takes the occasional note, or asks, and how did that make you feel? Uh, therapy can help you get the tools to make life easier, whether you're dealing with your temper or stress or depression, anxiety, PTSD, Going into quarantine, coming out of quarantine, I mean, you name it, the list goes on. Uh, you know, it can be really helpful to get uh, was it, uh, an outside opinion, you know, to uh, express the things that you're feeling and uh, see what someone else uh, has to say about it. I know even I've, because of this last year, and I've started talking to people, uh, trying to get uh, an outside perspective on the things that I'm feeling. Uh, and BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. 
it's not always the case. Uh, it's much more affordable than in-person th therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. So join the millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Rooster Teeth podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash rooster. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash rooster. Yeah. Next, next episode. I'm kind of the... I'm kind of experiencing that a little bit, and it's foreign to me, and I don't like it. In that the 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 pre-show jitters, which I, I do get for stand-up, like when we were doing stand-up, oh yeah, yeah, I would get that, that would for, for sure. sure. Yeah. And that was like even thinking about it makes me like shake. I told a, I told a fucking story about a about a, uh, on bleep face about a situ a predicament that I put myself in with mm. stand-up comedy that I had to fight my way out of. <laughs> that is probably. Probably the maddest I've ever been at myself and probably the shittiest I've ever felt and the most successful I've ever felt uh, all at once. But I never want to. It made me ne never want to do stand up again, which is basically I wasn't prepared and okay. I had to wing it mm -hmm. and I was able to do it. But it was not fun and it wasn't good. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't have the I don't have that. I, I just it's the opposite where I'll, I'll labor and stress about it forever afterward. But we're doing this uh, live stream on Friday called Fuckface Bleep Break. Face Bleep Face Break Shit. Uh, and uh, it's different than anything Rushdie's ever done, and I'm scared to death about it. That's on Friday? It's on Friday at 4 p.m. Well, now I want to know what's four? going on. Okay. It's 4 p.m. Yeah, it's basically, um, I've been obsessed for the last uh, four or five months with the, the collectible scene, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I started to get back into it at the start of the pandemic, and then then Bleepface, it became kind of part and parcel to Bleepface and what we do, and I've kind of really keyed into the idea of you know, with like with Achievement Hunter, I, I think the thing that I thought was great about it was that uh, we always described it as a friendship simulator in a way like we're it's like four or five friends sitting on a couch and there's an empty space for you. And we want you to feel like you're on the couch with us. And we're all playing the game, yeah, or playing the telling game. the jokes or like, you know, whatever together. Uh, but what this is with, with bleep face break shit and kind of where I'm trying to take that is more like making the audience more a part of it in in bigger ways. Basically, like, Bleeface is sort of becoming a performance art piece in some ways where we're, like, like this is the Don Zimmer thing and where we're, like, mobilizing the audience to, like, to really get to be a part of the content. And so I've got a lot of ideas to do that with baseball cards and basketball cards and, and dumb cards and stuff. Uh, but anyway, through the course of all of, all of my obsession with this industry, and I, I realized that... Um, that me collecting, like collecting baseball cards as a kid, is how Achievement Hunter started. It really is. It's like it was my desire to collect and accrue things. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I friends. guess achievements. Achievements. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you got it. you nailed it. I think yeah, Barbara, you really you got. I hadn't thought I hadn't considered that yeah. angle, but yeah, that that tracks as it well. It worked. It worked. Uh, <laughs> but this is basically like so. This is basically. So like fuck bleep face break shit is basically like the the genesis of what achievement hunter is. It's basically like the origin story mm. of achievement hunter kind of, which is just like the pure like finding ways to have fun collecting things. And so what we'll do for an hour is Gavin and Andrew and I and maybe J uh, Jack I think will be there. Uh, I had a segment for Gus, but I don't think we'll be able to do it unless unless you want to go to Eagle Pass tonight. Uh, no, no yeah. I never do. So we'll do it next time if there is a next time. Tonight. But uh, we'll just be opening up packs of cards, looking for Don Zimmers, looking for funny stuff. I got like. <clears throat> Like some really goofy stuff. Like I got some Game of Thrones cards, and What's... they have autographs. Someone's right? really excited about spam risk. Uh, like you know, they have autograph cards in like the Game of Thrones trading cards, and like there's a Hodor yeah. card where he signed it, and he signed it Hodor, Hodor, which is funny. They like say quotes, or like the lady that says shame, she signed her card shame, and then her name, which is. Hannah Waddingham. Thank you. Hannah Waddingham. Wow. It's just funny, goofy stuff like that. Trying to collect it and then just like having conversations. And Gavin's going to have a soundboard and play silly noises. Are and... you guys doing it at the studio? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it here live What are you doing set. with Andrew? Uh, he's going to, he's <laughs> going to be, we're going to pip him in in a funny okay. way. Okay. I was like, are we flying him in? No, from no, no. We've got a gag. Canada We've got a, an Andrew gag for okay. that. He will definitely be a part of it. But anyway, this whole thing, because it's so different and because it's like, it's me sitting in front of the audience just opening baseball cards and talking while I do it, which is, or, or Battlefield Earth cards, or some, all like, my ASMR. children cards, or whatever. <laughs> all my children. <laughs> I do. I have, a, I, have a, I have a bunch of all my children cards. No, you don't. Are all the I Battlefield do. Earth cards like slightly tilted <laughs> to the side? 
Dutch angle. And, uh, and I just, I'm scared that it won't be entertaining. I'm scared that people won't like it. Jeff, I think I speak for everybody in the audience when you could probably do anything you want and people will find it entertaining. I hope so, man. But it's like, it is keeping me up That sounds like a night. nice, is chill, it, fun time. Is, I hope so. Is this, this is so different. break shit at all related to uh, Break Stuff by Limp Bizkit? <laughs> no. Okay. No, I, I, I wish. Zero of Avi B. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a fucking deep cut right there. I forgot about that. Break shit? Yeah. That was the, what stuff. was that from? The, tra- the trailer? The trailer. The, the action it wasn't, trailer. The action it wasn't, tra- yeah. not the It wasn't the, uh, the character intro. The trailer. Yeah. God, I've been uh, way too text. long. Anyway, but that's the first time I found myself outside of stand-up being scared about something. Yeah. And I'm noticing it now. Um, and I don't Is like it. Is it because you're, like, hosting it? I think it's just because it's different and I want it to do well. And it's, and it's because I've been, like, I've been working toward this moment for about six months in my head, trying to figure it out and trying to plan it. And it's the most effort I've put into. I have no idea what that's like. <laughs> something something new that we're working on that we've been putting months and months of effort into that mm. terrified of <laughs> its launch. I mean, no, no idea. You couldn't possibly know what I'm talking about. No, not at all. No? I think <laughs> in general, the last year has just been a real confidence killer just from yeah. Yeah, having pretty much nothing new to talk about for an entire year. It's also you don't have the same type of, like you can't, you don't feel as creatively energized when you're at home mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. when you're working remotely and coming up with ideas or just like solutions well, to how you would do shows. When you're just looking at the same shit over and over, there's never any new like yeah. visual or any kind of like stimulation to like spark any type of different thinking. Maybe and it's also, a good thing yeah. your TV broke. Something new. <gasps> oh, yeah. something no. new to try. It's content. No, it is yeah. content. I was thinking the other day about Bleepface is that Andrew is now like one of the bigger players in my life. I speak to him all the time, text him all the time. I think I've met him twice. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting I feel like I'm getting cut out of this friendship. I feel like you I feel like I feel like I am I am feeling very third wheel in the in the in the bleep face triangle these days. It's like you know when you talk to someone on the phone who you know very well and you can you kind of imagine their face saying this stuff down the phone. Yeah. I haven't seen Andrew in so long that I've I've, I've like morphed what he looks like in my head, I think. When I hear him like while we're recording the podcast, I can't picture his face saying that stuff anymore i don't know if i've ever met him i might have met I him like in passing in the hallway maybe I one think time you probably met him at rtx or maybe at a like a pax but or also uh, same with gavin i can't picture all i picture is that stupid profile picture he has with that like giant <laughs> yeah. mustache the the glued on mustache yeah, yeah. that's if all I, I could see i've of seen him. that more times than his actual face. Same. <laughs> no it's same thing i've exact same boat if i see him in person and he doesn't have a glued on mustache it's gonna be weird <laughs> oh so you're saying he has to have like a glued on face whenever he comes down to do anything in person. Glued on facial hair. <laughs> facial hair, yeah. yeah. No, no, a whole glued on face. Like That would be we'll, fun, too. We'll give him that Gus his mask. Face? Yeah. Like a Hannibal Lecter style, where it's oh, like yeah. a face on a face. Yeah. The face is all the way down. It, um, oh it, it is it is true, though. Like you're talking about like running out of stuff to talk about and do for a year. Dude. Like I, I, one, of, one of my spirals with Gavin, I was like, similarly, I was just like running. I was like, I did like eight episodes on socks for fuck's sake <laughs> i had i did i did a whole episode on fingernail clippings like I, you're just really scraping the bottom of the barrel at some point you're yeah, like dude. when you're just looking at you're looking around like well i felt bad for gavin at the start of the pandemic because i think you were you were doing the rt podcast you were on still on doing off topic every now and then and fuck face and i was like how does gavin have enough Stuff to talk about yeah. for three yeah. podcasts. And, and the answer is, I d- didn't. You don't. <laughs> I'll tell you That's... the answer. Accent. That, yeah, it doesn't true. matter what he says. Anything sounds it great. Is, right? Yeah. It's a little bit different. <laughs> well, because like I, I felt lucky doing Black Box Down because like it, I didn't have to topic. tell stories. Right? It's like yeah. we could research a topic and talk about that. It's not like I had to come up with the shit myself. Yeah, yeah. and it's the same thing for like when we would do like streams or gameplay videos it's like you're talking about the game and like what you're doing in there so you have something to like focus yourself around but podcast it's just yeah rt podcast yeah. off topic and bleep face is it's off topic three times really <laughs> i mean yeah. they have different names but that's kind of what it is well yeah. you need to you need RT to attach yourself to a like an annual pass type podcast Dude. where you don't have to say anything you just sit there and listen to jack for an hour is that how... and then go uh thanks for listening <laughs> and then you go. <laughs> how many have you done five you we record we record episode six tomorrow. Yeah, wow. we recorded five episodes before the first episode came How out. How long are they? <sighs> that just like forty five make... minutes probably. Oh, I think That's they good. cut into about 40, 45. Is that just to make sure it was worth putting out? I have no fucking clue. I mean, it's probably just just I mean, get ahead while you can. I yeah. guess we're working on a new podcast too. 
uh, that we recorded the first two episodes for yeah. a new D and D audio podcast that we're doing called Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Trailer's out now. Subscribe to it where you get podcasts. Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Yeah, yeah. first episode comes out May fourth. It's a uh, it's kind of a reference to so we were doing D and D live on RTTV for a little over a year. The entirety of the pandemic, mm. really. Um, and Chris had this little rat character named Stinky. Mm-hmm. And he would make Stinky do everything. I like, hated that fucking thing. Everything. Like, oh, Stinky's going to go in and, and check this out, or he's going to go take this item, or whatever it is. And so it just became a running gag of having Stinky involved in everything. And so when we were coming up with a name for the new podcast, I was like, well, something, we got to have Stinky in there. Absolutely. And so Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Well, we wanted, I wanted to call it the Stinky Dragon. Me too. Okay. But someone by the name of Eric Bedour. Would not let us call it the Stinky Dragon. Why? Because it's a sex act on Urban Dictionary. Oh. Oh, who can't yeah. be? <laughs> now I want to name it that right. more. No, I, I'm, I'm on Eric's side, I think. Oh, he's calling me. <laughs> you don't want to. Look, look want as me? somebody who named the podcast Bleepface, you don't, it's not worth it. Put him on speaker. Put him on speaker. What? This is a terrible name for podcast, <laughs> and we can't name stuff after, like, Sex act. It's not a sex act. It's the name of a character. I understand. Daddy wants some. We also couldn't do that. But his name's not a sex act. He's a stinky dragon. That's what the sex act is. Hang up on him. Hang up on him. I don't think it's a popular enough sex act. It's not like 69. I've never heard of it before. Tales from the Stinky Dragon has more intrigue. No one knew that. We had to look it up. But anyway, we're doing our own part. If you want to be a part of this, you got to come into the studio. Go eat a hamburger. Tune in at roostreet.com. You tried to hang up on it. Who's on this podcast you guys are doing? It's So Gus is our dungeon master. And then it's myself, Chris, Blaine, and John. Okay. And we've recorded the first two episodes. It's been great. Uh... I think it'll be really fun. How long uh, are the episodes? They're really short. Uh, I think 45 minutes 45? Or so. Okay. I, honestly, I feel like that's like a, a nice sweet spot for podcasts. Are you are you editing some of the mechanics out so that it's like an we're, Adventure we're Zone trying, style so it's like smoother? We're trying to focus more on storytelling. And okay, yeah. people having fun with it. It's like, uh, so the... the so you cutting out all the what do I roll? What do I roll? Yeah, with that? Well, I mean, yeah, you, you kind of cut that out yeah. and tighten it up. And we're trying to do things uh, a little differently than we've done some of our D and D productions in the past. Like for starters, we're trying to really lean into the audio aspect, so yeah. the players don't see any board, they don't see anything. <clears throat> okay. So we yeah. have to convey it. It has to be theater of the mind, since we're trying to convey it to an audio only audience. There's no video at all associated with it. So it's like I'll have a board, so I can keep track of it, but it's on me to convey that adequately to them. Yeah. Is that? That's got to present a new kind of challenge as a DM for you. No, I mean, not really. If I mean, anything, that's typically how D&D is done, right? Yeah, if anything, it's just like, it makes sure that I'm doing my job properly. Really? Yeah. I, yeah. Have, a, I have a question for Eric. He's not, not there <laughs> he's anymore. Not here. <laughs> he's watching, he's listening. Eric. I think he's calling you. Is it going to be weekly? <laughs> the, the first word in bleep face that we bleep out is a sex act. Thoughts? <gasps> Too late to cancel it. It is the sex act. So you guys are the main one. If you called it Tales from the Bleepy Bleep, then yeah, I guess you could do that (laughs) if that's the example you want to go with. I don't know what you just said. What? How are you getting this so fast? Usually there's a delay in the the program feed. I'm I'm doing my job that I'm good at, and so I'm very on the ball. So are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're very good. Tales from the Stinky Dragon, Tales from the Bleepy Bleep, then yes. Is he wearing a there. MAGA hat? It's a terrible name. No. But... What hat are you wearing, Eric? Is that a MAGA hat? It's a producer. It's like a, it's, it's more of a maroon color oh, okay. than a red. Right. No problem. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, no problem. Love you. Bye, Eric. Bye, Eric. Thank you for your input. <laughs> I'm going to turn my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> This episode of the Received Podcast is brought to you by Adam and Eve. AdamandEve.com is the go-to upscale boutique for couples or single men, women, and everyone else. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff to spice up your bedroom is even better. They've got an amazing deal for y'all. Head over to AdamandEve.com. Use code ROOSTER. At checkout, you'll get 50% off almost any one item. But wait, there's more. Adam and Eve has your back. Uh, They're also going to stock you up on some free gifts. So enter offer code ROOSTER at checkout. Get 
10 tantalizing free gifts, uh, a sexy item for him, a special gift for her, a third item you'll both enjoy, and six free spicy movies, plus free shipping. Treat yourself, treat your partner, maybe, you know, make one of your neighbors angry a little bit, but hey, it'll be worth it. Uh, it's offer code ROOSTER, R-O-O-S-T-E-R, at checkout at adamandeve.com. Dude, I'm cool excited about that. Me. When does the first episode come out? May 4th. May 4th. Okay. Next week. And it's going to be weekly? Yeah, we have... Uh, um, John Reisinger's brother uh, is writing the story for it. He wrote the one-off we did for Extra Life, which I think went over really well. And <laughs> it's a it's a really good story. It's really really interesting. I think uh, people are going to really enjoy it. And yeah. How long are you? Is it going to go? Are you going to take breaks or is it going to be? I think we have what like eight episodes planned out currently. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See how it goes. Okay, and that would be like an, an arc, a complete right. arc. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, dude, I think that's awesome. Maybe there will be chances for people to pop in for a character or two. Yeah. Who knows? That sounds great. Yeah, yeah you guys should definitely do that with people. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to confuse everyone. I'm so I'm playing a bard. That is the only answer. Name, Badra. Name Bart. Oh. Bardra is funny. Bart's good too. But my name is Bar Barb. Yes. So I just wanted to confuse Barb everyone as much as possible. Bard Bart. Barb playing the bard named Bart. It's pretty good. Actually. If you just if you have an accent, it all sounds like the same. Bard. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played a bard before, so it's interesting. Are you are you having fun? Yes, except uh, I wanted to program some like like loot playing on my Go XLR oh. so I could like pop it. Well, can play the loot. I what? have a I have it's called <gasps> a mandarin and oh. I have it. I have one. Those are, I'll get that. Those are mandarins or oranges. Isn't it called a ma uh, man mandolin? Mandolin. No, it's not a mandolin. It's something else. Mandarin. <laughs> maybe it's not a Mandarin. Mandalorian. <laughs> Mandal maybe it's a Mandalorian. It's not a loot though. Remember, it had a special special name. Let's see. Could I get some samples of you playing it just for my? We'd have to go back go to XLR? the old. Uh, what was that show we did? Bark, Heroes bark, and Halflets. Cherry yeah. Mandarin. What what is it called? I thought it was a. Is I it not up, mandolin? I look up Mandarin music instrument and it just showed me mandolin. It's a mandolin. It's not a mandolin. It was something else. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look up loot? stupid guitar. Thanks. It's not a loot. It's similar to a loot. I don't know. Who cares? It's a harp, a stupid guitar, deep down. <laughs> but it's fun. A piano is the stupidest guitar <laughs> because you have to hit keys <laughs> to block <laughs> strings. <laughs> the piano is the stupidest guitar. That's your fucking title. Oh my god. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Sell that shirt. What, what else do you guys have going on here? It would here? be a good shirt. Oh yeah. Um, I guess it's a good segue to talk about the new stuff we've been working on. Yeah, I tried, I tried to tee up talking about how I was no, nervous. I appreciate about it. Yeah. yeah, no, uh, Jeff is doing the Lord's work here. Yeah. Um, so we kind of talked about it during our anniversary mm -hmm. about how there's obviously a lot of confusion, which we agree with about how there's a team of hunter, there's fun house, and then there's rooster teeth also kind of known as RT core, which is like a official unofficial title. It's mm -hmm. never something we gave ourselves. It just kind of happened because calling us rooster teeth was confusing because the company is also named rooster teeth. Uh, and so <laughs> there's always been this thing up in the air of like what do we do about this how do we distinguish ourselves there's a lot of brand confusion yes even internally absolutely because i'm it. confused and yeah. it's like it, it's also like we're all rooster teeth we're all part of this company and so to have one group be called rooster teeth kind of takes away from the fact that we're all part of this rooster teeth family um so we kind of teased it during our anniversary but we are officially starting our own brand yes it's gonna be myself gus Blaine, Chris, and John, as you're probably very aware of, you've seen us on the Rooster Channel together for this whole year. A year, a year yeah. Uh, and I guess, should I say the name? I don't know. Are you ready? I saw you guys teased it on uh, Twitter. Yeah. So I, I teased it. The acronym is STF. Uh, <laughs> what was your, what was your, I, I Super like, Taco Fun. Super Taco Fun. Which I like funny. kind of wanted to yeah, I was like, change oh, that's it. actually really good. I don't know why you, <laughs> that's like, a great name. Why you don't super go with Super fun. Taco Fun. Oh, I don't know why it never came up before. We might have to change it. We, yeah, we played pivot. around, like, honestly, and Jeff, you probably could uh, commiserate about this so much, but naming shit is so difficult. <sighs> Coming up with a name of a brand is so challenging. There were so many well, things thrown around. Yeah, you like come up with an idea, and you're like, yeah, we all love it. Oh, there's already, it's already yeah. used. Or like, oh, or yeah. Sex like, act. I, right. Or it's a sex I think act. It's, I think it's actually quite easy to name something when it's not yours. Like, mm. when somebody's like, hey, I need help with a name, you're like, oh, here's five dumb ideas. But the second it's like, Barb, I need you to name your podcast, or like, Jeff, you have a new thing coming out. And you impossible. Need it. It's impossible. It's impossible. And to, I'll go to my grave 
I love everything about what we've accomplished over these last 18 years, oh, Gus. No. But if I could unname us Rooster yes. Teeth, oh my God, I would give just about any amount of money yeah. to do that. And if I could unname us Achievement Hunter, I would do that too. I, had to I hate both of those so much. Bees, I had to submit paperwork to the U.S. government and explain why Rooster, Rooster Teeth, Teeth wanted to. I, I, yeah. I've decided <laughs> that if I meet people uh, and they ask what Merlin, I do, Merlin. That's what it's called. Sorry, it's a Merlin. Yeah, that's a wizard. It's, it was called a Merlin. <laughs> They're right. It was called a Merlin. Uh, like I'm not gonna. I I, I can't, I'm, I'm done talking about Rooster Teeth. If I meet someone, I'm an IT consultant. Like I can't. Really? Say, yeah. I can't. <laughs> I, I don't want to fucking. Get, I don't want to help you with your YouTube channel. I don't. I don't know how that shit works. Like. I, I can't. I can't do that anymore. I it's get a been lot 18 of 18 years. I get a lot. Yeah, I get a lot of people asking me for like, "Oh, you work in animation? Can you answer?" And I'm like, I, "No." Uh, <laughs> what? No. <laughs> so no. far off from my knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I play video games badly. And, and we come up with terrible names. Yeah. Like, STF. Which is? What? Well, he, here's a. <laughs> let me pause it. Okay. Let me pause it off to you. You have a lot of power right now in we your hands. Do. You haven't officially announced it as Super Taco Fun you can pivot or anything right else. You could pivot right now, or you could hold on to that. What is that uh, Earth C trilogy, right? Where it was mm -hmm. like you know Ursula Le Guin. Like if if you know somebody's true name, you have power over them. Like uh, Rumpelstiltskin. That too. You guys have. Uh, no, you, nobody knows your name. You have power right now. You, it could be anything. You could hide the name this. forever and make people <laughs> guess what it is. <laughs> But the social handles already exist. Doesn't matter. There's, we Doesn't got matter. a logo. There's still, we no got one knows. There's still time. Pivot to the food thing. You don't even have to do that. You just be like, it could be like, what do you think it means? Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah, that's what people, yeah. I see people in chat right now. We have chat up who are, are guessing a whole bunch of stuff. U.S. production company. Apparently there's like a wrestling move called, God, I'd have to look it up. They really want something, to know. Something toehold. Sinky's that fly, whatever that means. Jeff, please stop. That's not the right letters, dickhead. Step uh, over to a whole face lock. Spend the funds. <clears throat> I Shit, will say, like, people, if people have been watching our content, they've heard it before. Yeah. They've heard us use this term before. It kind of <laughs> has had come up in Super a tongue-in-cheek kind of way. I'm loving to see. So, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that one's Small great. Small-time well. fun. <laughs> <laughs> These are all shitting than fucking. These are great. These are all I assume yeah. better than the show, actual. Show days. the feet was pretty good too. Show the feet. Maybe it's all of these Steal things, the and the logo just changes Ma every episode. Maybe we yeah. haven't figured it out, and we're just like sourcing it. We're just like, hey, yeah, just throw out three letters to people and see if they come up with anything good. Yeah. Anyway, but you you could probably tell them what the real one is. But this is so much fun. They're losing their minds Suck trying to figure it out, and they're yeah. also mad at me now. So <laughs> now I don't know if I want to say the name or not. Oh, there's. Close. close. They were close. I've seen a couple that were pretty close. Yeah, there's some people who've like used some of the words in so there. So I nailed it. Stop the farts. Yep. Suck that fart. Anyway, we'll That's... tell you next week. Come uh... on. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. It's it's a squad team force. Uh, so it kind of came up, as you could guess, Blaine was a, a huge fan of this name. But it's very much that tongue-in-cheek, over-the-top, kind of like... 90s cartoon aesthetic of like this group of people who are just really dumb, but yeah, I mean it's better than Achievement Hunter. Like we don't do <laughs> couldn't, that. Couldn't be worse. <laughs> we I don't. How long do you think we spent months suggesting names and months. like talking about it? And it's funny because Squad Team Force was something that we just like came up with randomly as a temporary hold. Right. It was like the placeholder document name. Yeah. And we were going, we had this long list of a bunch of names, and then one day someone was like. What about that one? Like, it's just like, and they were like, you know what? It's stuck. We've been it's staring just... at it for months. Yeah. At least, but you guys, yeah. I was trying to think about when we had the name Haunter, that took about a, six months to a year, and nobody was ever happy, ever. Are you, if you guys are happy with STF, then that's great. I think it's a great name. Okay. I was like, if you're happy with it, that's I think, cool. No, no, no. I think, I think it's great to, to start off happy with it because we weren't, like, I mean, I, I would have loved. We it. had no fucking clue Rooster no. Teeth was going to be. If a you thing, had to rename Achievement I, Hunter, what would you name it? I, I don't know, but I wasn't happy with Achievement Hunter when I picked it. Like <laughs> it was like it was like it had been going on for so long, and we had been going over it for so long, and it was like the best of the options. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I really wish Haunter was called Are You There, Ghost? It's, it's me, me Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I know that was my favorite one. <laughs> Although that's not very like broadly appealed. We had a appealed, bunch of dumb yeah. ones. I liked the uh, on your market set Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the funny ones. The funnier ones are better names, but 
don't make any sense to yeah. people who don't know us. Yeah. And yeah. if we're trying to sell it. Yeah, not us. everything has to be an inside joke <laughs> punny name. Yeah. I like, mean, even Achievement <laughs> Haunter makes no sense. That's why we changed it. Shit the floor. Shit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. We're changing. Oh, that's our... fucking crazy. Shit the floor. <laughs> I really I like the, the, the logo treatment. The logo treatment. And the yeah. colors and everything for it. It's the color, great. color scheme is fucking nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's a it, that very like nineties aesthetic that we really are excited about. And like I mean I, I can't help but think of Blaine whenever I think of Squad Team Forces being this just like macho, mm-hmm. like super into superheroes and comics and all that stuff. Imagine if you lived the next nineties. Oh. It could. I, don't, I, think I was born in 89. If I live to 101, I'll be there. You could do it. That's doable. Yeah. What I listened to Jira. He didn't say shit about me. No, I'm not doing that. I'm oh, not no. fucking no. saying that. You guys, you guys <laughs> I'll never be gone. there. I'm going to make it. Okay. I'll be there. Well, you're a shit. I am not dying. 40, right? We've God. talked about this. <laughs> no, we, we have I'm talked about I'm not going this. anywhere. I will live forever. Steve Jobs said the same thing. Deal. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking try to cure cancer with rutabagas and shit, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ate fruit. <laughs> But yeah, oh, he had all the money in the world and did yeah. just n- no actual treatment with it. Or I guess not until the end. Not yeah. until the end. Because, well, I mean, it, I, I read his, his biography when it came out. It's like, he, I think he was seeing too far ahead of where we are in the world. He was looking at cancer as something that is a chronic manageable disease. Mm. And he, his thought was... We're, we're at, he thought at the time that we were at the point where it was something you could live with if you just learned how to manage it correctly. I think eventually down the road we may get to that point, but we're not there. Yeah. And he was not there. Yeah, that guy should have been born in like 2150. He would have been right at home. Who do you think was a bigger... Vi- who do you think is a, was a bigger visionary in their life? And I realize it's not fair because one of these people is dead and the others aren't, but do you think Bezos... <clears throat> Elon Musk, uh, Bill Gates, or uh, Bernie Burns. or fucking Jobs. Jobs. I think probably. I mean, I know I love Jobs more. It's probably Bezos, but because he had like the intention. I feel like he always intended to do what he did. Yeah, I think Bezos saw it like he drew a line in the sand that was decades down the road. And was like, we're starting here, and we're going to get over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, he successfully navigated and did it. To the point where it's like, Amazon is a fucking crazy company that does everything except make video games and mobile phones. Yet. They ca- cannot do those things. They've tried. Those are two things they just cannot do. <laughs> I guess it's like, why not just just put more resources into that if they want to? But I mean, just they're doing Fortnite. everything else so well. Right. So why? Yeah. Or you know what I mean. I think uh, you're. I think you're monetarily probably monetarily well. I think you're probably right. Yeah, I think yeah. Jobs was innovative. I think ultimately he was uh, a marketer. He was like a futurist, right? Like he. he I'm seeing a lot of Gates in the chat. He, he could figure out what people wanted and how to get there. Uh, Gates, I think, was uh, like a super smart technical genius. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's been well documented, well covered. A lot of that, those early days of like Windows and Mac OS, like switching to uh, a, 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 a a GUI operating system like all of that was kind of stolen from xerox anyway Mm -hmm. like there was really no originality in a lot of that stuff yeah the originality is people who we don't know who worked at xerox on that stuff. it it was very much that like they caught fire and it was like what do you do with it right and Mm -hmm. you 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 expand it from that and 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 i do think in some ways it was even reactionary probably for a period of time and musk i think is just rich I think, but he is I thinking think, of like he's I think thinking like I need to back up the human race. I think he, I, yeah. think, I think he's just put a lot of money. I think he's he's betting on himself, putting a lot of his own money into his own ventures. But honestly, I don't. You don't think there's any altruism behind that? No. I don't, you, you think I, SpaceX I, is purely I a monetary don't play think for him? That there's a lot of. I, I have a lot of problems with Elon Musk. No, I, I, uh, he's a complicated dude, and I, I, I certainly do as well. Yeah. But I, I can't imagine. Like, I, I, SpaceX I, isn't the easy road I, to take get, to get rich. I get rich. annoyed at, like, the boring company. And I yeah. get annoyed at his idea about a filter for news agencies to, like, filter out real news and fake news. Like, these ideas that seem, that maybe he hadn't heard of before and that he gets credit for inventing. It's like, the boring company's a glorified subway for one car, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's fixing a problem of traffic by utilizing another one of his companies by putting people in cars instead mm-hmm. of fixing the problem in a bigger way 
to solve it for mass transit as opposed like instead of eliminating cars it's just a vehicle to sell more cars yeah uh spacex is a little different um mm, but i mean ultimately a lot of that is just like billionaires have money and that's what they do they go to space yeah, yeah i guess that's true too or as gates it's like a lot of what a lot of what he spends his money on now is is disease prevention right and uh like yeah eradicating shit like malaria um which is actually good for the world. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I mean, and I, I think Amazon has uh, is also has a lot of problems as well. But I think that, like, looking at what I think, of course, I'm no expert in this field or anything. When, where they started at from step one to where they were going, Bezos. I think I think it is Bezos. Well, I will say one gets the impression that Bezos has been on a path the entire time, and I don't certainly don't feel like that about the other guys necessarily. Yeah. Um. Guys, we have 55 followers now on the Squad Team Force Twitter account. Hey, congratulations. 55. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. Are we verified yet? <laughs> Not yet. We got, Elon Musk. <laughs> we got nine on Instagram. Woo. Uh, All right, back to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the guy who had 10% of Apple that he sold for 800 bucks? Pete Best. Uh, he, he sold it like the, a week after they started yeah, the he company, got, he got right? got like cold feet. And I think he sold his 10% back to them freaked out for like 800 but i think now it's worth 200 million if they're worth two ronald trillion. wayne nah. he uh sold 10 percent back for 800 dollars one year later accepted a final us 1500 dollars to forfeit any potential future claims against the newly formed apple but Ten what is going on with gamestop 10 percent of apple today peter hayes is follow number three peter hayes <sighs> Peter Hayes, I know you, you you found it, yeah. Peter Hayes found the squad oh. team force found it, accounts, uh, yeah. As of last year, Smart boy. 10 percent of Apple would be ninety five billion dollars. Yeah, but only worth us. Only worth two trillion now. <laughs> Wasn't that worth the, when they were a trillion? I thought that was How much is Apple worth? <laughs> uh, their market cap is currently two point two six trillion dollars. So that was yeah. my yeah. So it's a It'd more than two hundred twenty six yeah. billion dollars. Yeah. yeah, that was a really expensive eight hundred dollars that he what spent. What would you be doing now well, if you were a billionaire? Would you be sitting here? <laughs> or would you be? Fucking who knows? I posted... Be opening better packs of baseball cards, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pose this question to you guys because this is a hypothetical I talked about with Trevor last night. Okay. Let's say you were a multi-billionaire. You just okay. had like, fuck you money. Okay. If you could buy a neighborhood in some like beautiful place, south of France, whatever, to the point where you could afford a house and place for everyone you know, all your friends and family to stay and live forever and give them each like a million dollars. Oh, live. it just wouldn't work. Everyone would be, it would be. Do you think people would do it? And would you want that? Hell no. 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 Why Hell not? No. It wouldn't work. It would be intolerable. Everyone would be a complete pullback. You, you would be the, you would be first off. <sighs> I, I don't want to spend time. I don't want to spend too much time with anyone anyway to begin with. But you this would is, spend your, your billions your getting as far away from right. us. I, I, <laughs> then, then I'd wake up one morning and Gavin would have hit my car in the driveway and I'd have to see that face. <laughs> well, cause for like, I'd hit all of your Lamborghinis. It wouldn't, be that. it wouldn't be that. It'd be like when Gavin and Barb get into a fight and then they go to you because you're the middleman now because you're the one that bought all the property and you're the one that corralled everyone right. together so suddenly all of the problems it, become like, your problems. And the next thing you know, you're in charge of Rooster Teeth You're managing again. an HOA Full of people who are your who were your friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a neighborhood that you happen to be able to buy yeah, all the houses. Not, in. It, no, that'd be rubbish. I know okay, Mark, well, Mark Cuban did it. Here's, did it work out for him? The reason, like, like, because <laughs> ultimately, true. if you wanted to, you could just be like, I'm gonna go live in this place, whatever, yes. and do whatever I want, and have like a different job, live a different life. But you would miss your friends, right? You would miss people well, in I your life. I don't think I would uh, do anything different. What do you mean? I just feel like I'm living my billionaire life, even though I don't have it. I kind of, <laughs> I'm just, just secluded. I kind of what agree. I do. Yeah. Like what? I want to ride my bicycle for two hours every day. Like I wake up thinking about riding my bicycle and I go to bed thinking I'm going to ride my bicycle tomorrow. I hope I have time. And I do that. And I don't know that a billion dollars would help me do it anymore. Yeah, I, I don't want like, a bunch that's of, all I, I want to do. I don't want a bunch of new stuff. I don't want any more land. I, I think it's because I've been watching uh, this like house hunter show where people look at houses in like the Caribbean. Or like uh, Caribbean life. Yep. Yes. You talking about Caribbean life? Yep. Yes. Seen every episode. So good. <laughs> but it's it yeah. makes me think like that would be amazing if I could mm -hmm. just like first of all, the the U.S. and a lot of places in the world are 
I don't know. It feels not great to live here sometimes. And so I've obviously thought about, like, where would I want to move if mm. that was a possibility? Where would I want to live? And then I'm like, but if I went there, I would miss my friends. So I'd want to take them with me. So stay with your friends. But I don't want to live where my friends are because the place <laughs> that they live sucks. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this anecdotally, right? There was a period of about two or three years where Gus and I lived two streets away from each other. Yeah. Uh, we lived in the same neighborhood. I could walk to Gus's house in six great? minutes. What's that? Wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? Yeah. Right? You you were there. You guys both stayed in that house when Gus was living there. The amount of, if I ever, if I ever saw the inside of Gus's house, it was probably walking either of you over there to show you where <laughs> Gus lived or vice versa. Like in the years that we lived there, mm -hmm. kind of like, the, like when you moved to Puerto Rico. I think the one time you went in that house was when it was under construction and you broke in. Yeah, I did that. You broke in. I was in the house probably three times. Yeah. Totally. But, um. But it's kind of like when you moved to Puerto Rico, and I was like, uh, we were like, oh, it's going to ruin our friendship. And then we realized it doesn't, because most of our friendship is video game and text-based. Now yeah. just text-based, right? Yeah. Or phone-based. phone, phone based. Uh, So, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I just, I don't know. It was just one of those, like, I'm daydreaming about It's a fun to daydream that all of my friends would be around, and it'd be convenient, and money's not an issue. I get that. Yeah. But, like, Gavin and I live... I don't know, 10 minute bike ride, oh, probably a five minute car ride. Uh, I live closer to Gav than just oh, about yeah. anybody, probably. I mean, people, and Austin's I, not that big, so. It's not that big. Yeah. And I have been to your house twice and only to pick you up to go for bike rides twice. Yeah. I've never seen the inside there, of your house. Thank there, you. There you should was, change that, though. There was an article in the New York Times today. Uh, it's actually what I sent you earlier, yeah. Jeff. There was, uh, that, that kind of talks about what you're talking about right now, Barbara. Uh, it was a terrible headline. I forget what it was. The it was YOLO. Some, it was something about the YOLO economy. Yeah. About how, Ugh. as a result of the pandemic and working from home for a year, a lot of people are reprioritizing the things in their lives. Yeah. And saying, like, if it doesn't matter where I work from, why am I still accumulating all of this stuff? And why am I still, you know, working my ass off at a job that maybe I'm not happy with? Like, why don't I just go somewhere nice, like, downsize my life and work like a small no stress job like gig yeah. economy stuff and just be happy like why don't i um trade cryptos and etfs and like just do that on the side whenever i need enough. money right yeah. yeah and just like really enjoy life like i think you know the having been locked at home and seen so much misery over the last year has made a lot of people uh reprioritize the things in their lives and wonder like why don't i just do things to make myself happy like we only have such a limited amount of time here yeah why not fucking be happy with it why go to a job you hate and do well, shit you don't like i've even thought of like if i if i were to change careers like what what would be a just a job that would be like no stress so just be fun and i'm like wh maybe when i'm older and like not quite ready to retire but like still want something to do if you move to a place like hawaii for example and let's say there's like a nice resort there like working at the resort you're around people who are in a good mood, who are just there mm -hmm. to like have a good time. You're you're bringing people joy by mm -hmm. you know working that job, and it's like you're in a nice place and just it's, it's, it's not a lot of stress. It's not a job you have to answer after hours emails or get on right. the conference yeah. calls. You, you you leave it there when you drive right. away. Yeah, that's I can't imagine what that's like. Yeah. You know, to leave your job at your job. And then yeah. all the saying like, I love rooster teeth, and I like no, no, I love sure. being here. But like in terms of like long-term future what am i going to be doing when i'm like 60 when you're okay. in the 90s again when i'm in the second 90s <laughs> <laughs> or you know maybe even sooner who knows it uh, all depends on like where life takes you but it's not something that I've, I've thought about it a lot this pandemic i think i will say the best job i've ever had including rooster teeth uh is working at a video store now, granted, that economy's gone. Like, that industry's dead. I can't, it's not like I can go work at a video store again. But that was, that was the most stress-free, <clears throat> just everybody that worked there was cool. Customers no. aren't at a video store are not jerks. No, not at all. And yet. it's just, it's just easy. You just, it's Mi just, it million was a dollar pleasant idea. job. Million dollar idea, Jeff. Okay. New video store for a new century. You set up a store where you help people find the movie they want to watch on the video streaming service they already have access to. 
Someone comes in and they're like, I, I want to watch Nomadland. I heard it won an Academy Award. I don't know how to watch it. You're like, well, well, that's on Hulu. Do you have Hulu? <laughs> I love that idea. Here's the problem. I have an app on my phone that does that. You See, enter in well, anything you want, and it tells you where you can go. I mean, it's called Google. It, it's, it's built into your phone. You can use the TV app that's yeah. built into the Apple phone to tell you. But I think a lot of people don't do that. They don't yeah. know. They're like, I don't know how to watch this movie. they got to Google it. It's like, oh, do I pay three ninety nine on the Amazon store to watch it? Do I pay two ninety nine on YouTube? you like... Just like consolidated. Yeah. It's like the new movie phone. That's it. <laughs> we're going to get a phone <laughs> number. Phone. People are going to call us and we're going to tell them how to watch the movie they want to watch on whatever service they want. Are you going to watch it? That's a great idea. Yeah. Gus, Gus movie phone. Movie <laughs> Gus phone. We'll work on the Squad Team Force. We'll work on the name. It's be, yeah, it's coming up. Don't you hate the phone? I do. <laughs> That's the worst part for you. That is the worst part. But yeah, it's, 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 it is it's very a very foreign idea to have a job where you don't think about it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, mm -hmm. 52 weeks a year. And not, not saying that's a bad thing, but it is like, I've, you, it, like Rooster Teeth has been my life since I was 15, inside and out. And so, you know, yeah, everything I, has revolved around that. I, I, I understand what you mean. I, that's just kind of the way the world used to work. I guess it doesn't anymore, but like, I guess that's an antiquated idea that you, you find a job and that job becomes your life and you work there for 20 years and then you get a retirement and then you die, right? And like, but that's the way, like I was in the, that's the way it's been for me since 18. Like it was like that way in the army. I was a journalist. Like you had, you were working for every soldier, sailor, airman, Marine, Coast Guard person uh, is working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the yeah. entire time they're in. There is that. And then we worked at the tech company, Telenetwork, where we were on call 24 hours a day mm -hmm. as managers and then Rooster Teeth. It just feels like it's been, it just feels like that's grown up like adulthood to me Yeah, is I've just only ever been in careers that are uh, all encompassing. All encompassing yeah. I guess, yeah. I get that. I guess I worked at an office store. Office when I was the beeper repairman. That was the only time I, I, I didn't have I a job. I actually like really that. liked working at Burger King. <laughs> I had a good time. I, I, I got really, really good at it. Sometimes you work by yourself. That that didn't seem very great though. I. It was <laughs> nice when it wasn't too busy. Mm -hmm. If I was by myself and it was like a Saturday night, it was hell. But other than that, it was just like. Just making food, and then if it wasn't busy, I would make food for myself. <laughs> go in the back and eat it. Have yourself a Whopper? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whopper Junior. Let's oh, not go crazy. I, I ate an Impossible Whopper the other day. <laughs> How was it? It's good. I like the Impossible Whopper. That was before my time. Or, sorry, that's after, after, my, yeah. after my time. I had one not too long ago, and it was really good. It wasn't an Impossible Whopper, but I had an Impossible Burger the other day that was, I could not tell the difference. Hop Dottie actually has a really good one. It might have been. Yeah. I don't remember where it was, but yeah. I can't believe I'm saying that. I fucking. What's going to be the hardest Hop meat Dottie. to give up or to replicate? Veggies Cuban style. Cuban? Yeah, Cuban. Like, oh. oh. Cuban. Yeah. Cuban meat. Also, yeah. I, Gavin, I also heard that Cuban. That song Cuban meat. <laughs> I also heard Cuban. Well, he said Cuban. So. Yeah. Cubans are human. What about sushi? That would be hard. I feel like you could replicate fish flavor pretty easily. They already have like imitation crab. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Crab with a K? Yeah. I feel like maybe pork would be difficult, like bacon. Do they have... They have bacon. Yeah, there's no, actually some really good vegan bacon. Faken? Faken? Faken um, bacon? Bacon bacon? If anything, I would think like deli slices. Mm. Apparently, vegan cheese is really hard to get right, according to Gus. No, there, there's a great place. <laughs> the, the, what I got today was not good. <laughs> but uh, there's a really good place with uh, good vegan cheese close to here. Gus was eating vegan cheese and vegan pretzel. Or yeah. Are the pretzels right? Yeah. yeah. Do, do you think it'll ever not be... Will it always just be called vegan cheese, or will it just have a new name? For the ingredients that are in it, yeah, like we call it there, cheese. There needs, to be, there needs to be a new name. Mm -hmm. There, there's this like. Speaking of which, I, I have living in Texas too. can be very difficult. Oh, uh, and it just really pisses me off when government officials intentionally spread misinformation to just rile up the base. Like I don't know what you're talking about. That's happened <laughs> in this country. Greg <laughs> Abbott the other day tweeted that. In Biden's new, this whole Green New Deal, in Biden's new, whatever he called it, uh, that Americans would only be allotted four pounds of meat a year and that you could not have burgers on Fourth of July. <laughs> and Greg Abbott tweeted, like, that's never going to happen in Texas. Like, well, yeah, nope. It's, it's never, also never going to happen. It's also never going to happen anywhere. anywhere. Right. It's not going to yeah. happen anywhere because that's not true. That's, that's like categorically something that no, nobody's asking anybody to do that. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, it's, in, it's just intended to. And I know I'm feeding into it by talking about it here, <laughs> but this is a good reminder. Go fucking vote. 
There is also an election read. in Austin. If you live in Austin, there's an election right now. And I think like only 1% of people have voted on it. L- incredibly low voter, voter turnout This so is far. such... Every election is important. This one is also super fucking important. Hey. And uh, nobody's getting out there. I don't want to talk about it on camera, but I would love to talk about how you voted. Yeah. If you want to talk about I'll it. Because I, I, I am, uh, Emily and I have been just, just racked with how, how to vote. It's it's very complicated, very nuanced situation. Right. And that, 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 that is being diluted that is being for diluted talking points for talking points right. this is about the I homeless think, encampments right yeah yes well, i think i know how i'm gonna vote but um yeah I, i'm curious to hear so, your uh, opinions the, um the election the, the election day is may 1st and as of today eight percent of registered voters in travis county have voted i think early voting tomorrow is the last day for early voting i yes. think which i'll probably do it i'll do it tomorrow um i just have been holding off because i just i just don't feel comfortable i just don't feel comfortable with it yeah, they're just, like trying to make your decision. Yeah, it's just it's it's so heartbreaking and yeah, it's a it's a really serious it's a really serious decision to make, you know. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be close. I think I I don't know I really don't I know which no way it's idea. gonna go. I have no idea. And uh, it's like you said, it's nuanced. It's not an easy thing. And there's a lot of misinformation. Right. It's almost like every vote. Yeah. It's like that. Unfortunately, <laughs> for everything. Yeah, it but this one is like a lot of conflicting info. A lot of yeah. This one's just like difficult decision. Super affects everyone in Austin immediately and right now. Sure. In big ways. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So go do something about it. I'm sure there's an election coming up wherever you live too. <laughs> go go do it. Go vote. No, no, nobody's doing it apparently. Like yeah. people like to vote for the presidential election because that's the big one. There's tons of other elections that happen all the time. Make sure you uh, read up on them. And for the people that complain that voting for the president doesn't matter, uh, you're not correct but even if it even if you were voting in local elections matters a lot yes mm-hmm. a shitload more so way more so and they do you see also i guess like the initial census numbers are out mm-hmm. and uh texas gaining two texas seats gaining new york's two losing two yeah no new york's losing one i thought in the california's losing one college electoral no in uh the house of representatives in oh. congress, in congress. Yeah. oh because all of the all of the representatives are divvied up based on population that's why the census is such a big deal and such a tricky deal and why it has to remain bi- uh, nonpartisan. Mm. Because how you count matters. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, Texas getting two more. <laughs> Vote. <laughs> I don't know. There was yeah. something dumb I was going to say before, but now I don't remember, and then I feel like it's not as important. As it was fun <laughs> just <laughs> watching people shit on Greg Abbott in the chat for, like, <laughs> three straight minutes. Yeah. Gosh. Oh. All right. Um, well, let's, uh, let's end this. We're going to, we're going to end the podcast. Go, okay. f- go Should we end it? Be- yeah. Why, why? Uh, May 4th for Stinky Dragon, Tales from the Stinky Dragon, where you get your podcast and on the receipt site, of course. If you don't write Tales from before and you search for it, you will see yeah. porn. Make sure it's dirty, T-A-L- dirty porn. Yes, not T-A-I-L-S. You... Yeah. Awful. Oh, well, we don't want to go down that road. <laughs> Annual pass. <laughs> Annual pass is out now. Yeah, when's that? Well, is that on Thursdays or some shit? Yeah, it's okay. on Thursdays. <laughs> Just on it. I recorded 150 of them, but I, I don't. I think one came out. <laughs> and go listen to Black Box Down always, so we can make more. And stay tuned for Squat Team Force. Yeah, coming soon. We're doing doing some fun stuff coming up. Oh shit, the floor. Shit the floor. <laughs> shit the floor. <laughs> Super taco taco fun. fun. Shit the floor. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.